Hi there, this is Phil Pendlebury and uh, here I am with my everything template. I've just made some adjustments to this and there's a few people asking about it. So I'm just going to quickly show you how it works. Before we start, just a quick explanation of the basic principles here. This is my songwriting template and basically what it has is pretty much every instrument that I think I'm likely to need for a normal songwriting process, uh, including all the routing and not so much EQs, but a few plugins and so on. And then they're all disabled, which means that the project itself loads up very quickly. Okay, so the process is really simple. I'm using instrument tracks, especially for things like contact. This is another thing that's been debated a lot and I did some tests on this a while ago and I came to the conclusion that with contact I'm going to use a separate instance for each instrument rather than trying to load contact up and that does make things easier uh, when it comes to making a template. Also I'm using instrument tracks which work perfectly for this method. And like I said earlier this is my songwriting template it's not my orchestral writing template which is much much bigger but for the sake of what we're doing right now I thought I'd stick to this one. So let's just go through this. Here we've got um, cine strings. So first of all I've added the instrument track. I've enabled monitor so that I can actually play it and then any adjustments to the actual library I've, I've already made anything that I need to do there. So then looking at the mixer you can see that it's there. That's the VST instrument channel. And the routing is going to orchestral strings, which is part of my group set up here. And there's lots and lots of groups. Um, and they all have sums as well, so, I, you know. But this is just how I like to set up um, groups and so on. Um, but yeah, ideally, if you're used to using groups to sum different instruments, as you can see, I've got Albion strings, I've got Session strings, I've got Cine strings all going to the same group, which is probably how they would end up. So that's that. So it's all set up and ready. And all you do is you then assign a key command usually is better, but you can right click and do disable track, but I have it on a key command or you can use MetaGrid. We'll get to that another time. So the key command to disable track. And there we go, so that's now done. And as you can see, I've been through this and done it for all my other instruments. Organised into categories of whatever you feel is best. So that's basic instruments. Also, I've got an input for my Variax, for example. So if I enable that, and again, it's automatically in monitor mode. There's the Variax, and I've already got my favourite UAD Marshall plugin set up and ready to go. So we'll disable that again. See how quick that is as well. So really that's about it. Now the only other thing is again on the group side, I've got quite a few group configurations here because there's just never enough room. Effects and groups. And what I have here is all my basic send effects. And as you can see, one of them's enabled because I absolutely know that I'm gonna use that particular plugin no matter what the project is and the others all do various different things but they're not enabled and what I do with these is actually physically enable them with the power button if I decide that I'm going to use it um, just like that simple as that for example there's my drums and bass sum channel which has got the empirical um, labs again it's UAD the distressor over the drums and bass that's always there because I know it's pretty much always going to be there. And I've always got the Neve preamp on, uh, on my drum bus. The whole point of this is to show the template as it is and the principle of it. So basically, load up your instruments, use instrument channels, tweak and do what you wish to do. Personally, like I said, I like to leave them in the mode where they're automatically going to be monitored. So as soon as I enable the track, I can play. And then once you've set everything up, disable. 
and look at my CPU meter here. Now, this is a pretty old computer now. You can see that uh, the CPU is not being pushed too hard, and all that really is the stuff that's loaded up as it is. Let's load up. Here we go. This is the entire brass section. Um, this is Cine Brass, Spitfire. Um, again, songwriting brass, so it's not um, going to be quite as detailed as an orchestral template. But just let's load those up. And I'm not going to edit this to uh, save time. And you can see, that's if I want to load them all up. Some are quicker than others, as you can see. And there we are, all ready to go. And look at the CPU, there's no difference. Barely any difference. Most of that CPU is from the big powerful plugins that I've got, which are always on, and you don't have to do that. So yeah, there you go. So that's my everything template. I call it my everything template because my company name is Everything Created. So that's where that name came from, but it kind of makes sense to me. One last thing then, let's just close now. Okay, one final thing. Let's just open that template up and without any editing, we'll see how long it takes to open. Here we go, and pressing open now. Well, there you go, and that was it. There was no edits there whatsoever, and I would imagine that is approximately 10 seconds. I don't know. That's that. So that's the template itself, and the final uh, process is save as template, done. File exists, yes, okay. And then what happens is if we're going to start a new project, we open the hub, and I've uh, named it as a recording template. So if I go to recording, you can see that my templates are all there, and you just select that prompt for location, and then off you go, so that you can uh, start a new project, basically, in a new location with everything set correctly. Right, that's about it for now. Thanks ever so much for watching once again. I hope this helped. I'll see you again soon. Cheers.